So millions of Americans want to lose weight, and many consider weight loss surgery, including our next guests, who were so desperate they traveled outside the U.S. for more affordable weight loss surgery, and they are far from alone. The CDC says weight loss surgeries are now part of a worldwide multi-billion dollar medical tourism industry that is expected to grow substantially in the next five to ten years. Our guests say that while the weight did come off, there were unexpected and devastating consequences. Watch. My weight problem started in high school. I've struggled with my weight um, for kind of all my life. I got up to almost 300 pounds. I tried a bunch of different things to lose it, and it was a constant battle. My stepmom, Liz, had come back from surgery. She lost all the weight, and I saw that, and I'm like, I want to be thin again. There's no way I, I could afford the options in the States. I am a single mom with two kids. I saw it as the magic bullet. First thing that I can remember coming out of surgery that I was in horrible, horrible pain and all of a sudden I felt something wet on my stomach and I looked down and I was bleeding from my stomach. I, I literally never thought I was going to get home to see my son and my mom ever again. The issues with me came with aftercare. And that's what they didn't tell you is they didn't tell you um, how important the aftercare was. It needs really constant maintenance. It needs fills and adjustments and all sorts of things. About two weeks later, I collapsed. I was at work and I collapsed and they got me into the CT scan and they had seen that my spleen had been cut. And I went home that night and I was literally crawling from the bathroom into my bed. I was just praying to Heavenly Father that I didn't die right in front of my baby. The emotional part um, I don't think really started until I lost my stepmom. Her band actually eroded through her stomach and her stomach leaked stomach acid onto her heart and lung. He left my stomach wide open, so anything that I was ingesting like, was just going wide open into my stomach as well, so that was turning septic. I have trouble breathing at night sometimes, but I think the worst part for me is the nightmares. The more you get into it and the more it starts to affect your body physically, then mentally there's always that block, this isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right. They diagnosed me with PTSD and I never even knew what PTSD was until all this. I relive Mexico in my head every night, not trying to be able to know if I was going to get out of there or not. Mm. Joining me now, Jessica Ballenby, Justin Blackburn, and Carson Miller. Thank you all so much for being here. So let's just, let's just start with where you were you know, weight-wise, when you made this decision? Because it's a, it's a dramatic, drastic decision to have weight loss surgery outside of the country in particular. Why did you do it, Jessica? What, where were you physically? I, physically, I just wasn't where I wanted to be. My legs were hurting. I, I love to play sports. I love, I'm very active. And that was one of my biggest decisions on going to get it because my knees and my ankles were hurting. and. Yeah, you know, just How was heavy there. were you at your heaviest? I weighed 251 pounds. Okay. And insurance was not an option for to cover this? You no. Know, it's like all if this is a cosmetic mostly about it, so insurance doesn't have anything to do with it. Some insurance companies sometimes will, but it, it seems like it's the exception and not the rule to getting this and you guys same boat, you couldn't get insurance to cover it in the US. So Justin, how about you? How how large did you get and and what was it that made you say I got to do something? At the highest point, I was probably about 300 pounds, and I loved to ski. And that was one of the things the, the salespeople for the Mexican surgeons, they love that. They love active people like Jesse Carson and myself because that's one thing easy to sell. We all had knee problems or we were all having problems related to that because we still wanted to be physically active but the weight makes it difficult. So you start having pressure on your knees, you start having pain. But back. they know how to lure you in is your, is your point, yeah, right? That's exactly Same right. for you, Carson? Yeah, I was an ex-high school athlete. And um, right after that, I got, you know, I kept eating the same way, but I wasn't as physically active. So I got up to about 295 pounds. And the day of the surgery, I was 285. So, so was there any hesitation, you know, because it's not unknown that there are risks in going to Mexico or south of the border in general for any sort of, any sort of surgery? So how did you evaluate that in your minds? Uh, for me, uh, my stepmother, Liz, had just gone down to Mexico. She had the surgery done about six months before I had my surgery. We, Carson and Liz and I went on a ski trip together, 
And Liz looked amazing. Um, she had gotten the surgery. She dropped about 50 pounds. It was the first time I really saw her back to her old self. And she was a nurse, so she told me, oh, the clinic's beautiful. The clinic, you know, is, is as safe as any clinic in the United States. And the difference financially between here and there was what? It's about a third the cost. A third of the cost. It's about like 24 grand here, 23, 24, and down there around eight. I yeah. paid, I paid six thousand three hundred dollars for my surgery. Six thousand three hundred. Yeah. Same. Paid forty-seven. Forty-seven hundred. Mm -hmm. So it's cheap. It's definitely cheap by you know American standards, but there's a reason for that. Up next, Jessica wakes up from surgery, and the complications begin. Why she says she finds even laughing difficult now. <laughs> Lose the weight back for half the price or one third of the price. It's a tempting promise for many Americans battling obesity. That's exactly what our guest today hoped for by traveling to Mexico for weight loss surgeries. Back with me now, Jessica Ballenby, Justin Blackburn, and Carson Miller. So Jessica, let me start with you. You, you wake up in Mexico having had, where in Mexico was it? Tijuana. Okay, so having had the surgery. And you're in intense pain as soon as you wake up. And tell us what you saw and felt. Um, uh, like probably about an hour after I got out of surgery, I've never felt pain like this in my life. I was thinking to myself, I have two children, I've had surgeries before, and I was thinking, what in the heck is wrong with me? Like, I, I couldn't even, like, tell you how much pain I was in. About an hour later, all of a sudden, I looked down and I felt something wet, and I looked down and my stomach was bleeding. And, um, they came in and they said it was normal. And I, I, there was other people that were in the room with me. I had two other people that had just gotten the surgery done as well, and they weren't bleeding. And I said, if it's normal, then why aren't they bleeding? And so they release you. You, it's, you can only be in the hospital for 24 hours, and then they release you into a hotel where supposedly there's registered uh, nurses and uh, you know a doctor if anything happens. Well, I put on a hoodie and sweats, and I laid down to go to sleep because I didn't sleep that whole entire night. I was in so much pain. And I woke up to get a leak test. They were taking me to go take this leak test, and I felt something wet on my face, and I went like this, and I was completely covered in blood. I looked down at the bed, and it looked like it was a murder scene. I literally took off my hoodie, and I could go like this with it, and blood was just pouring from it. So I, then I started really getting scared because I was down there by myself. But you know, I went with other girls, but they were strangers to me. So they did a couple of they did a follow up surgery to address some blood clot issues. Uh, they didn't even do the surgery. He came in after I was bleeding like that. He came back. That's when I finally seen the doctor after after I was bleeding like that, and he came back in and he sucked out and he, um, with this tube type of thing and he sucked it out and said that was what it was was a blood clot later you get back to the states mm -hmm. and during the aftercare your problems continued yeah and they told you something had happened during the surgeries yeah. what was it they cut my spleen and i was bleeding internally oh. um and then once i figured out that they cut my spleen I, he left my he never finished the surgery he left it wide. my stomach was wide open as well so Anything that I was drinking, like water, tea, chicken broth, anything like that was just exposing right into my stomach. So I was a big septic tank because of the blood that was inside of me. And then anything that I was eating and anything like that was turning septic too. You could have died. I did just about die. I don't know how I'm standing here telling you my story. When they, when they rushed me to the hospital, they told my mom, we don't think she's going to make it. Oh, oh my God. Mm. Justin, um, you, you mentioned Liz, your, your stepmom, yep. who had had the surgery and she had done so well and she was one of the reasons um, that you got it. And so you go down there, you convince Carson, right? You encourage him, so you, you get it. You get back. Um, Liz wound up having issues as well. Did you have yours before she had hers, your, your issues? Um, I've had fewer issues than probably Carson or Liz did. Uh, I've maintained a fairly healthy weight throughout the time. I got down to about 205 pounds, which is, which is close to ideal. And that's fairly close to where I am right now. So this is, this is where I wanted to be. Uh, Liz started dropping weight. She wanted to be about 140, which is a good athletic weight for her. 
she got down to 140 and she stayed there for a fairly good period of time. Right around Christmas, she started getting gaunt. She just, she got wider and wider. She didn't look healthy. It was Christmas 2012. And Carson, right around the same time, got down to 155, 160 pounds. Both of them, their bands were tightened. They had the lap band, which constricts the flow of food through their stomach. So right around that time, um, both of them had barely been eating. Both of them had lost so much weight that they just didn't look healthy. And Liz, over about the next six months, um, she just kept getting thinner and thinner. She got down to about 125 pounds before my dad rushed her to the hospital and the, they did a CT scan on her. They could tell that the band had eroded through her stomach. They took her in for emergency surgery and unfortunately, after about three or four days in the hospital, she turned septic and they were unable to save her. She died. Yep, she passed away. Unbelievable. My brother was, uh, my youngest brother was 18 when she passed away. He graduated from high school in May. She died in July. Oh. And Justin and Carson also wound up developing severe complications, even stateside at this clinic to which they were referred by the Mexican doctor. We'll have that part of the story when we come back. <laughs> My guests today all say the promise of a new me motivated them to travel to Mexico for weight loss surgery. But while they did lose the weight, the post-op co complications were too much to bear. Back with me now, Jesse Ballenby, Je Justin Blackburn, and Carson Miller. So when, you know, you, you, you're, you lost your stepmom, and, and you and you both started to experience complications of your own, you guys had the lap band put on. So what were the complications? You were going to a clinic in Arizona to which the Mexican doctor, not same as Jesse's doctor. You guys shared a doctor, but it wasn't the same as hers. This is also in Tijuana, though. He recommended you go to this clinic. And, and what was the problem? Uh, they would overfill you. They, they weren't certified. So it was basically that you had a full list of people that you could go to. And you assume that they're certified and they're trained and they know what they're doing. So... You go into a clinic, and again, this isn't covered by insurance, so a lot of this has to deal with money. And you pay cash to get your band adjusted, because that's the biggest thing with lap bands is the aftercare, making sure it's adjusted right and you're not under-eating, over-eating, whatever. And so I go in, and they overfill it. I have a 10cc band. It holds 10 you know, cubic centimeters worth of fluid, and they filled it all the way to 10. So Which meant you couldn't eat virtually anything. Now, when you first leave, because it takes a while to adjust, I could. So over there for a few months, I was able to eat, and I was able, but it just kept worse and worse and worse. And finally, when I got rushed to a bariatric surgeon at St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix, it, there was two days where I couldn't even drink water. Same for you? Yeah, I had, I had to have mine unfilled. Um, they only put seven in mine. But the worst part about it is we found out Gwendolyn Hall was a nurse midwife. And the thing about a nurse midwife, I filed a complaint with the Arizona Nursing Board, and when they revoked her license, she surrendered her license, I'm sorry. When she surrendered her license, we found out as a nurse midwife, she's not even licensed to treat male patients. And she'd been seeing Carson and I, and we're, she's not even legally allowed to see us, let alone do anything bariatric related at all. And it was it was an eye opener. We didn't find this out until almost three years after Liz died. We found this out last year in May when they finally revoked her license. The um, our producers reached out to Gwendolyn Hall regarding the accusations against her. And she says she did warn your stepmother, Elizabeth Erickson, that she needed to seek additional medical care uh, as for your uh, allegations, Justin and Carson's accusations, she, she denies overfilling your lap bands and said to us, all these people knew the risks when they go into surgeries in Mexico. People have to take responsibility for their own health care. Your reaction to that? 
Um, you don't know the risk. They don't tell you about it. They, they, they don't tell you anything of the sort on the truth of it. And that's where is the problem why we're sitting here right now. There were supposed to be registered doctors at the hotel that you were at. They, there wasn't one. They didn't have one until the day I left Mexico. So I'm sitting there bleeding to death and there's not even anybody there to help you. That's the type of risk that's not right. You go in there, you're th they're telling you one story and you're getting a whole nother ball game on it. And that's that's where it's at. Where are you today, Jesse? How, how are you? I am sick all the time still. I, I have bear claws that hold my stomach together because he completely shredded me. And I know that I went to Mexico and I know that I'm the one who did it. I live with it every day. And, you know, people tell me, well, you know, you did it. Nobody forced you to do it. Nobody did anything. No, nobody forced me to do it. I went down there and did it. But I live with the consequences every day of it because of what was done. He didn't even have a conscience what he did to me. He knew he cut my spleen. He knew it right then and there. I was bleeding. I woke up instantly with complications. It's not and like I returned. And sent you off. And, and, and exactly. And how come he didn't take me immediately? If he, had, if he even had a conscience or the woman that took me over there, why didn't they take me over to San Diego immediately and get me proper care that I needed with it? What do you guys want people to know? People considering this surgery, which is far cheaper. Well, uh, as we are flying out here, we are going through the American Airlines in-flight magazine, and there was an ad for... Um, Mexican tourism in Juarez and medical medical tourism medical tourism in Juarez and we're looking at medical tourism in Juarez and the important thing is we're not suing for malpractice that's the thing about our lawsuit it's not a malpractice did you file the lawsuit now against we did we filed the a lawsuit. doctors the clinic primarily we filed it against the recruiters the people that are in the United States that are encouraging people to go down to Mexico and the thing about the United States is we have fraud laws so you have to tell people what they're getting you have to disclose to people the risks you have to disclose to people who they're dealing with um, even if it's there. in a foreign country, but they're doing the recruiting in the United States. They're doing the advertising for medical tourism here in the United States. The companies that are doing the advertising here are still bound by our U.S. laws. And last word to you, Carson, for those sitting at home right now thinking, well, you know, 6,000 is better than 24 and maybe this won't happen to me. What say you? Uh, there's other avenues. I, I regret doing it and I, I wouldn't do it again. Um, do your research. It's the, the old adage everyone says it all the time, but do your research and then you have the willpower probably to handle it yourself and you don't need to do it this way. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason we have all these lawyers in, in America. They're not all bad. They're not all bad. You guys, thank you for coming on telling your story. I hope, you, I hope you're well. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for having um, us. Do you want to tell the audience we reached out to all the key defendants involved in this now class action lawsuit? Uh, and Jessica's personal lawsuit, many either declined to comment or did not respond at all to our request. We'll be right back. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.